So actually the first question you might be thinking here is, well, what is a sound check? Why do I need one? Well, in exactly the same way that the musicians will take time to set themselves up, get their instruments in position, tune themselves up, make sure that their voices are warmed up perhaps, it's exactly the same for the sound tech. You need to make sure that all the things you've got going on on the desk are properly set up, they're properly tuned. This will help you to get the best possible sound from your system. Now before we start sound checking, I'm making a couple of assumptions here. For example, I'm going to assume that everything is connected at the stage, the band are all ready to play, and what we're going to do is we'll walk through one by one on each instrument on the desk. I'm also going to assume that I've routed the desk properly in advance. Now I know that we can check this later and it's a great problem solving tip to check your system routing, but we're going to assume that this is all correct before we start, okay? So as we begin our sound check process, there are 10 steps that I'm going to work us through. We're going to work through these quite slowly and deliberately right now. Once you get into the practice and into the swing of it, you're going to be repeating these within just a matter of seconds for each channel. Hopefully, for a typical five-piece band, for example, maybe 16 channels worth of mix, you should be able to do this within three minutes, worst case five minutes if you're being really quick. So I'm going to walk us through the sound check process and I've got a mic here to help us do that. So the very first thing I need to do is PFL the channel. Remember, this will give us a visual representation on our large meters here. It'll also give us a sound in the headphones to reference to. Don't use your headphones yet. They're only for a reference if you need them. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fader to minus five. I'm going to unmute my channel. From there, I'm going to use my gain control and spin in the gain until I get an acceptable level coming out of the mic. When it sounds right in the PA, that's when you should stop adding gain. Once you've, you're happy with the sound of it, then check your LED meters to make sure it's not peaking. If you've got your system set up correctly, you shouldn't have any problems with peaking and red lights. If your system's slightly underpowered or you're really struggling for system headroom, then you might find you're running into red lights. That's a different problem, not a desk one. That's a speaker problem. For now, I'm going to turn off my tie clip mic, so you're only going to be listening to this handheld mic here. OK, now you're only listening to this handheld mic. I'm going to pull it away just to make sure. You're just listening to this handheld mic. OK, so we've PFL'd the channel, number one. Step two, we've brought the fader to minus five, and we've unmuted. The reason why we come to minus five is that it gives us enough travel when we're mixing so we can pull the fader up to get more gain, more volume out of the channel in the system. It also gives us some travel below. I find that if we come to zero, actually there's not enough travel up the desk, so I rather set to minus five. Once we've set our fader to minus five and we've unmuted, we're gonna bring the gain in until it sounds right. Now that I've got my gain in, I'm gonna to need to EQ the mic to taste. Now this is a vocal mic, so I'm gonna to need to make sure that my high pass filter is engaged, it's on, the button is in. And also, I might want to wind out the low frequency EQ control. This is just gonna really clean up my vocal mic to make it sound really crisp and clean. You'll notice that I have no other EQ settings loaded in at the moment, just winding out the low frequency contour. For a vocal, if I need a little bit more warmth, or maybe I've got too much boom in my voice, I'm going to be using 300 hertz in my low mid to define that boom or lack of boom. If I need a little bit more nasal bite to the sound, or maybe I want to get rid of a little bit of something because somebody's got a cold perhaps, then I'm going to use 1000 hertz, 1 kilohertz. Finally, if I need a little bit more sibilance, a bit more presence to the voice. Then I'm gonna be working around 3000 hertz. They're my top tips for a vocal. We'll be looking at others during the DVD for different instruments as we go along. Once I've got my gain set and my EQ set, you might find that if I've employed quite a significant reduction in EQ, that my gain just needs to be adjusted. 
just to compensate for these drastic EQ changes. Now I've not made a mega change to my EQ, so really my gain is going to be about right, but I'm going to listen just to make sure it sounds okay in the PA. Now, this is the last opportunity I have to set the gain. Once I've set that, I must leave it, because as soon as I come to this next step, step seven, when I start spilling in monitors, if I start adjusting the gain, once I've mixed the monitors in my auxiliaries, I'm also going to be not only adjusting the gain for my main fader going to the main PA, I'm also going to be adjusting my auxiliary output mixes, which I don't want to do. OK, to get the best monitor check, I need to make sure that the monitors are down to start with. Push my fader down as well. As I do this, I'm going to switch back to the tie clip mic so you can now hear me. So I've taken my fader down to minus five. From there, I can't hear the main PA now. You can only really hear what's happening, happening in the monitors. We would spin in the monitor until it's at an appropriate level for the musician. Once the musician is happy, then we'll stop. I'm gonna unmute this mic again, go back to the vocal mic. Now I'm going to pull the fader back up to minus five. At this point, I should be checking to see whether the PA sound, the front of house speaker system sound, is still louder than the monitor sound. If your monitors are dominating the volume more than my main PA, then something's wrong, and we need to reevaluate and readjust our monitor levels accordingly. If everybody's happy from there, we can move on to the next one. So that's the process. Let's walk that through, shall we? One to 10. Number one, PFL the channel. Number two, fader to minus five and unmute. Number three, spin the gain in to an appropriate listening level. Number four, EQ to taste. Fifthly, make any final gain adjustments as appropriate. Sixth, pull the fader down back to, to minimum. Seven, mix for my monitors as appropriate as required for the band. Eight, check, is everybody happy? The band happy? Am I happy? If so, I'm going to pull my fader back up to minus five, step number nine. From there, step number ten, repeat. You might find that actually this sound check process is completely alien to your church. Sometimes when you've only got a very limited amount of setup time, the band are trying to rehearse, you're trying to sound check, nobody's quite got enough time to do everything. Well, clearly that's not a technical problem, that's actually a practical one, so let's try and address that before we actually look at the sound check element. As I said right at the top, sound checks are as important for sound techs as they are for musicians tuning their own instrument up. If the sound tech cannot sound check properly, he will never be able to achieve a good mix. It's all about creating a culture in which the musicians and the sound techs can work together to achieve the best possible sounds. The musicians working to the best that they can, the sound techs mixing as good as they possibly can. This is all about the sound check process. It might be helpful as a sound engineer if your desk is really far away from the stage rather than shouting from front to back. You could use a talkback mic this is a mic plugged into the desk that isn't rooted into the main PA. It's only being rooted into the monitors for the musicians. Some desks, like this one, have a different talkback mic input. Equally, some desks you might just want to plug straight into the back in a normal microphone input as you would any other mic. As I said, this is an important process for the sound tech, but it's equally important for the musicians. You should be giving feedback to the sound techs. We should be working as a team to strive together to get the best sound. Now, this means that being really tight on time is important. So musicians, guitarists especially, I can say this because I am a guitarist, please don't noodle. It's so tempting to noodle away while everybody else is doing their sound check and you're just standing there really bored. It really hinders thing things for the sound tech. So please don't do that out of etiquette and politeness. If everybody does things as they're asked to, take instruments one at a time, work sequentially channel one up to channel 16 or whatever number you've got, 
work in that logical pattern, get it done really quickly, get the musicians off and running, and then worry about all the other um, smaller details like putting new batteries into your radio mics. Do that later on while the band are rehearsing. One final thought on sound checks. If you've got two of you in the tech position, perhaps have one stood behind the desk doing the sound check from the desk end. The other person could then be stood on the stage working with each musician as you go. If you have any problems, inevitably you might have a channel that's not quite coming through as you expected it to. Person behind the desk, move on to the next channel while the person at the stage is resolving that issue. It keeps things moving quickly and it helps the musicians to get on and going as quickly as they possibly can. Having two of you can be so helpful, especially when you've got two people speaking the same language. Musicians, don't think you can get off lightly. Your job is to help as much as you can as well. I've already said, please don't noodle, but you can also help by help tracing cables. You can check that your volumes are gonna be set. When it's your turn to sound check, are you gonna be ready to go straight away without faffing? Also musicians, when it is your turn to sound check, don't play really quietly. Give the best possible performance you can. You don't have to prove your virtuosity on your instrument. Just strumming away, plugging away on a groove or a simple chord progression is all it takes. You should be operating at about a 75% volume capability here so that you've got a little bit more if you need it and so that you're also not giving too little for the sound desk.